We are live all the way over in the United Kingdom, and our guest today is Claire Bowen. Claire, what are you going to do for us today? Uh, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to do a painting which gives you wow factor. Wow factor. And I'm going to, yeah, and I'm going to make it so it's um, easy and accessible for anyone to have a go at. That's the plan. Okay, so if you're an experienced painter, you're going to learn how to get wow factor. And if you're an inexperienced experienced painter, you're going to learn how to do an easy-to-do painting. I like this. We're going to get started right now. <laughs> it's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Welcome to Plan. Uh, I, yeah, get, I'm getting everything all messed up. It's Art School Live, isn't it? I was just on Plan Air Live last week, and I was there for four days, and I said Plan Air Live a lot. So excuse me for saying that. Actually, Claire knocked it out of the park. She was on Plan Air Live, too. Our guest today is Claire Bowen, and she is an amazing painter, and she's in England. And she lives in the area where the uh, English Impressionists were. And today she's going to teach you how to do a simple painting and how to create a wow factor in your painting. So you don't want to miss that. And so uh, first, let me just tell you, if you're listening or watching, uh, we have a pair of value specs as our prize today. Value specs help you see values. And it's a great tool because you can keep them on your head, bring them down when you need them, when you're learning how to Paint, or quite frankly, I still use them all the time because uh, I always get my values off a little bit. And so uh, we'll be giving away. And, and the way to win those is to essentially leave a comment in the comment section. And we love it when you say where you're watching from. Okay. Uh, the winner of the last prize is Bridget Shields in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She wins a subscription to our magazine, fineartconnoisseur.com. Okay, terrific. And uh, we have a free video for you. It's 240 plein air painting tips. And that's at plenairlive.com slash 240. Make sure you get that. We've got a lot of artists who contributed to that, and it's really good. And, of course, you can subscribe. Uh, I, I need an editor right now. Uh, you can subscribe to this program uh, on YouTube. Uh, we just hit in December over a hundred thousand followers. We're excited about that. Ooh, so exciting. Uh, anyway, uh, you can follow on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. We'd appreciate a follow and a subscription. All right. Now we're going to get back to Claire Bowen. She's got her camera all set up and she's going to do a still life. Claire, tell me a little bit more about what you're going to do here. Sure. So I've got my, um, my lemons set up and, um, I've got my, light source coming in from the side. Obviously I'm going to be mixing on my palette here. I've got quite a limited um, colors and I've drawn out ready. And um, I've also just wanted to show you um, that this is a study I did beforehand and it shows you the um, tonal values. So if you've got uh, Why don't you the light is one. Can you set that on your easel so it's not moving around a little bit? Sure. Maybe sorry. Just yeah. It. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, that's okay. No, it's too low there. Oh, boo. Um, it could hold it. Yeah, just move it up. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to explain that the, the what I did before was I did a drawing on here and I put the numbers in. So I've got four tonal values and um, it starts with one. So one is the lightest, then two, three, four. So it shows me the kind of the shapes. So I'm simplifying the shapes of um, value. And that helps me then with a pattern of what I need to do with my color. Um, so I'm going to be following this. It will help me to do it onto, onto my actual painting. So um, it's quite yeah. a useful tool to do. And I've done that. I did that a lot when I was beginning. And um, it gives me a kind of a map, um, a value map to start my painting. Well, one thing that's really important, Claire, and I think people who watch, uh, if they don't know this, there's the old saying that um, color gets all the credit, value does all the work. 
And you can create beautiful paintings in monochrome like this using three or four or five values. And uh, it's a really great practice. If you are new to painting, my, my mentor made me do this a lot for like about a year. And then after that, he, uh, he said, look, I want you to do a value study at least once a year for the rest of your life, because it's <laughs> real easy to lose track of your values. Yeah, so true. So true. And I, I do it as well. I do it as a sketch in my sketchbook um, with, um, you know, pencils. And then I also do it, do it as a painting, too. It really helps you observe the um, tonal value shapes, which is really useful. Yeah. So, and so you're, so gonna, you're actually going to be referring to that uh, so you, yes. make, you get your values right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'd recommend doing them, um, especially if you're starting. All right. Excellent. Cool. Okay. So thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to start with um, is getting a first layer. I'm using um, a little bit of Gamsol and um, my yellows here are um, cadmium yellow mid and cadmium yellow lemon. Um, they're the micro harding and um, I'm going to just can, can I just interrupt real quick because sure. I, I think I want I see something I'd like to explain okay. uh, it looks to me like you have a warm and a cool yellow a warm and a cool red <laughs> and a warm and a cool blue is that correct you are so right yes and then I don't know what that is above the blue that's probably a black or something no nope. So um, I've got a viridian there, which I might not use. I don't know. I put it there in case. But so my two blues, you're right. So I've got a cool blue, which is a cerulean, and a warm blue, which is the ultramarine. Can you touch on this real quickly? Because this is something uh, somebody asked me the other day that they're really confused about the use of warm and cool colors because they were told all blues are cool and uh -huh. all blues are cool, but some blues are warmer than others. Can you can you touch sure. on that a little bit? Yes, and it, it, I think it is confusing because you think blue is a cool color and red is a warm color, but there are warm and cools within the blues and reds. So this blue, which is the ultramarine, has more red in it, so more of this sort of color in there. Um, so it makes it warmer, uh, and this one has more yellow in, so it makes it cooler. Uh, and then it's the same for these as well and this. So um, I'd call that a cool yellow and a warm yellow. Um, so I don't know if that, does that answer I your think question? That helps, that helps a lot. I think people get a lot out of that. And it might not hurt to kind of refer to where you're using warm and cool. And then also sure. everybody should understand that white is a cool color. So when you, yes. when you mix white into things, it automatically cools it down. So it, you have to be very careful about that. Otherwise you'll lose your warmth. Yes. And um, especially titanium is a cool color. I think of it almost like a blue. It's so cool. So if I put w white into a warm mix, I always put more yellow in as well, which yeah. does help. Well, back in the old days uh, at the laundries, they used to put what's called bluing huh. into white because it made whites look whiter. Huh? Well, there we go. <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm going to put a layer in here of um, of this. I want to kind of have a translucent color in just to start me off. So this is a canvas, looks like. Yes, board. it's a canvas, um, uh, kind of like a thin plein air one. And what did you draw on? What's the blue marking? It's just um, ultramarine. It's paint. And okay. Ultramarine blue. Um, is it so, dry? Um, it is because I did it yesterday, okay. but I wouldn't normally do it before. I'm only doing it just to help me today. Yeah. Um, so I'd normally just have it. I'm not liking that color. It's a bit too red. I think I must have some red in the brush. That's better. Because um, I want to have, you know, um, someone told me once that if you want to make it looks like it's got light coming through, is that you have a kind of a layer of light underneath it, and it infuses through then. 
Um, so that's what I'm just doing at the moment. I oftentimes, I oftentimes tone my plein air panels with uh, Indian yellow. If huh. I know I'm going to be painting in a bright, sunny day. There we go. Yeah. All right. So um, it's just roughly put in. I'm going to start with my darks. Um, that's kind of like the classic way of doing a, an, an oil painting. Um, so darks first, dark to light. And I'm going to go with um, getting the darks. Because this is about lemons, I'm going to get the lemons in first. So um, I'm actually going to use my palette knife and get quite a nice amount of color. So I'm going to show you, because yellows can be quite tricky to, to mix, especially a yellow in shadow. So um, a yellow, it's kind of getting the, the simple color theory. You just need to make it darker. So how would you do that? The way I do it is to put the complementary in. Okay, and what's a complementary? So a complementary is the color across from uh, across on a color wheel. So okay. it's straight opposite. So straight opposite a yellow is a violet. So I'm going to make a little bit of a violet here. So what I used was permanent rose and ultramarine. Um, so that gives me a, a violet, and then I can also add make a little bit of lighter version as well in there. There we go. Um, so I could use that to um, help me later on. Um, so this, if I put that and that together, just a little bit of it, you don't need much. It will change the yellow and make it darker. Um, it will also make it less bright. So that's what happens when you put a complementary in. It, it kind of neutralizes it a little bit. If I put the equal amount in, it would actually just go gray. It, it does do that, which is quite useful to know. So you can see the difference already. I might need a little bit more. That's a, a really great thing to understand. That's a, because darkening a yellow is really hard. It is hard, yeah, um, because it's quite a light, bright color. And to make it dark, you're like, well, how do I do that? So you, you mix up the complementary, stick some in, and there you go. Um, so I'm going to now put, I'm going to have um, three tonal values, I think. It will make it easier to then see whether it's right or not. And then I'm going to mix them next to each other. So you can see the difference. It's already um, what I've, you know, what's happened with that. Um, I'm going to add, so I'm also looking at my lemons. Um, I hope you can see those okay in the frame. Um, I squint my eyes and I'm just looking at the general color. So I think it's a little bit bright at the moment. So I'm going to add a tiny amount in of that one and maybe a little bit more of the red, make it a bit warmer. So I used a bit of permanent rose there just to warm it up. And also I want to make sure that I'm going to mix enough paint too, because it's very easy to be stingy. And I don't want I to ask you a question it. about your palette. Is it glass? Uh, it's that flexi glass. I don't um, know what that is. No, it's um, like, like plexiglass. Yeah, it's it's okay. just one of that safety glass. Um, it's really useful. It um, doesn't. Yours does not look scratched. Plexiglass usually gets very scratchy. It's because I've only used it twice. <laughs> okay. And do you always paint like this with your palette beside uh, the painting, or is this just for demo? No. Just demo. Yeah. Um, it's normally at my, you know, waist height. So I do like so, doing that. I think it saves a lot of time and it helps you see things in the in the same exact light. Correct. Yeah, it does. It, it, you get less um, trials going over instead of coming from up and down. You know, I was it's, doing it's a, a painting last night, and and it was. I kept just frustrated because I had to keep dipping down all the time. I thought I need huh. to put my palette up beside me. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm just warming it up slightly because people do think that lemons are very lemon yellow, but actually they do need a little bit of warming. So I've just put a bit of permanent rose in there. All right. So um, maybe a bit much. Okay. 
So you can see the three differences. Um, I'm going to now just start that, I think. Let's get on with it. Uh, I'm going to do a test first. Always what is your warm test. blue? Is your warm blue um, uh, cerulean? Um, no, the warm blue is ultramarine. Oh, and then what's your cool blue? Cerulean. Okay. So, and then I've got a um, viridian underneath that, which is just quite a useful color. Hey, great for making darks. Yes, correct. Okay, so you do a, t a test shot here to make yeah. sure that you've got the right color. Correct, yeah. Um, and it's not bad. And I'm, I'm also checking my tonal values here too. I'm just going to hold that up again and just give you an idea. You know, like, so, okay, so I'm looking at my pattern of tonal shape and what sort of value it is as well. So everybody um, needs to know to squint down when you're looking at that to make sure that you can see if it's in value. Correct. Or value specs. Yes. <laughs> I need to get a pair of those. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Claire, we'll send you a pair. And, I'd love uh, a pair. Thank you. Um, and Dean will, uh, will hear this and send you a pair. Thank you. <laughs> we'll send um, you an easel brush clip too. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So I'm... Something that is tricky with lemon, uh, um, yellows and lemons is that it's, they are generally a quite a light tonal value. So if you squint your eyes and look at a lemon compared to either a leaf or the bowl, you can see that actually the lemons are light. The general, even the darkest, are fairly light. Um, so I'm also making sure that the darkest part of the lemon the darkest part of the lemon is not as dark as the bowl. Why? So that's also what I'm checking that, okay, is that okay? And it's, I think that's not too bad, but I want it also to make sure that it's dark enough to show my lights. Right. So it's, it's kind of, everything's relative. Right. Cause the contrast of dark against light will make the light stand out more. Correct. You got to have a dark to show the light. I try to be the interpreter here. <laughs> You're doing very well, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so I've just put in a, 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 a very simple shadow shape there. I'm not putting in any detail. I'm not putting in any kind of, you know, pitting or anything. It's just the shape. And then I look at the other ones and compare those. And this one is actually a little bit lighter. So I'm going to reflect that. It's still in shadow, so I squint, and you can see the shadow shape is um, coming around here like that. So that's that one. And then I look at the final one, this one here, and he's fairly dark. So I'm going to go back and just mix a little bit more into that, maybe just warm it up a bit too. So I'm still using that very useful violet color. So the, the variation of um, yellows, it goes either a warm. So can you see that that's quite warm? Um, and then as it goes round at the top, it goes a bit cooler. So I'm going to just add, hang on, I'm going to put a bit more yellow in there. Surprising how much you need. Is that a cad yellow? Uh, it is cadmium yellow, um, Michael Harding. So um, I'm just going to add a little bit of the blues. Whew, can you see that? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit strong. So I've just had to modulate that a bit. But I wanted it cooler. So I don't know. I want you to see the difference. Can you see that on there? Is it too, sh too subtle? Oh. It's very subtle, but we can see it. Yeah. So it's that's cool and that's warm, but they're both yellow and they're both in shadow. Um, okay. So I've got kind of the basic shape now. All the shadow shapes are done. I'm now going to put in the light shapes and I'm going to change brushes for it as well. Why? Why? Um, We'll keep it cleaner. I'm actually deciding whether to do that, though, <laughs> because 
I haven't got a brush. That's my favorite brush for the moment. So I'm going to just wipe it. I've just given it a little wipe. So I'm going back to my, my light side now. So I'm going to do a little test and see how that looks. And you can really see the difference there. Absolutely. It's, um, and it's already, it starts to look lemony, um, as in the fruit, not the color. Uh, so there is variations. And I'm, although I'm doing it a simplified shape, I'm still looking at the color. I'm still looking at the shapes. Um, I'm making sure that I've painted it nicely in, in the, how it is. I want to paint, point something out to people yes. if they're wondering. You created this drawing yesterday, and I'm guessing yesterday afternoon because the light is falling differently on uh, uh -huh. on the lemons in your picture versus what's falling on them now. Yes, slightly. Yes, the, it is. Um, the the light has moved around a little bit, so um, please excuse that it's not exact. No, um, that's okay. We're learning. This is great. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so there's a middle bit here that is kind of the middle tonal value, but I'm going to come back to that. I'm just going to get the simple shape in first, because as I said before, anybody can have a go at this, and I would encourage it too. Um, so I think that there is not enough difference between this side and this side. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little bit of lemon because when you want to show tonal values, you want to make sure that you can really see the difference between light and dark. And at the moment, that one is a bit too subtle for me. So I'm using a bit of a lemon yellow and a bit more um, permanent rose. I haven't used any white yet. So that looks a bit better. You can see the difference there. I heard somebody say one time delay putting your white in as long as possible. I heard that too. <laughs> and I would agree. I try not to in the beginning. Um, one of the reasons is that it means that you can move your paint around a bit easier if it hasn't got the light, the white in there. Um, and it makes it, you know, because of course it kind of makes it chalky when you've got the white opaque. So when you've got, um, no white then it makes it translucent even though these are actually quite opaque colors but especially outside plein air i try not to use white in the beginning um okay so it's very subtle you know very um crude at the moment but um it's a start and i'm going to now put in for the leaves um because what i tend to do is i paint the main subject first. So if this was a boat, I'd be doing the boat first. Um, and then I would put, um, now I'm gonna put the, the leaves because I can then tell whether um, the green is working next to the yellow in tonally and um, color wise. If I put something over here, then I couldn't tell if it's working so easily because it's not next to each other. So it's almost like building up a mosaic of shapes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use, um, because they're fairly dark leaves, I go for the, I look for what would be matching my um, paint, my color. So I'm going to, obviously a, a, yeah, a green is, if I'm going to make it, is a blue and a yellow. And because it's dark, I'm going to start with a dark um, blue, because I could go with a cerulean, but it, I'd have to use quite a lot of it to make it dark enough. And now I'm using a little bit of CAD. And I can then decide how much to use of it to make it um, light or dark. And again, I'm going to start with the darkest areas of the leaves. And again, I'm going to go back to my jobby here. Your jobby. My jobby, technical term. <laughs> um, so it's got the dark side there. So I'm gonna look for my darks in each, in, in the leaves. All right, so maybe I could go a little bit darker.
Now, do you tend to keep your darks uh, more thick or more thin? Um, it depends what bit I'm doing. So when I go to the, the bowl, um, it's, it is super dark. It's almost black, that bowl. Um, and so that will be the thinnest thin, thinnest thing on my, pe on my um, canvas. Um, because if you, if you do too dark, especially straight away, the darks tend to really reflect and they don't sit well. Um, it, they, it, they look better if they're thinner darks. And the lights on the opposite end look better when they're thicker, which is quite a good thing to remember. I'm looking for the, the shapes and I'm being quite, um, I'm holding my brush um, kind of overhand and just kind of placing the, the marks as fluently and kind of boldly as possible. It's a ultimate short flat brush, Rosemary & Co. And um, like a bristly, I guess you'd call it, a bristly brush. You are such a good instructor. Oh, yay. <laughs> I'm jumping up and down here. <laughs> Don't ruin your painting. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. You made my day. <laughs> well, you'll um, have to read the comments and the compliments you're getting in the comments when yeah? you Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, focus. I've got to focus. Now, so I've left my lights, my light areas. So if I did that all dark, it would kind of, um, it wouldn't show that there's a, a, a change in direction. So my, ch this, can you see that? Yeah. yeah. So the change of direction is, this is the leaf, by the way, and that's my light side. And because the, the light is hitting it there, it's, it's got light on it, like my hand. And because this isn't in the shade, in the light, it's, it's darker. So I have to describe that with my brush and my uh, tonal values. So back to the old tonal values. Um, the way that I make a, a green lighter is first of all, putting more yellow in. Yellow is a really good way of getting light paint. Um, because if you put white in there, I'll show you, it makes it a lot more chalkier. Can you see that? So I'll show you, it's, it's, it's a little bit too chalky. So, but if I add some yellow in, it makes it, it's, it's still green, but without it being too, too chalky. We don't want it chalky. We want nice, vibrant colors. And it's the same over here. So then when I've got it on my brush, I look for other spots as well that I can fill in. And there's a bit down here too. So when I looked at that leaf then, I squinted my eyes because it's a bit more subtle over there. So there's not so much light. You guys are enjoying this. Make sure to share it so your friends can see it. Hit a like, a heart, whatever. Okay. I'd like to give encouragement to our guests. <laughs> what time is it over there, Claire? It's probably about what, 6, 6 p.m., 7 p.m.? No, it's not as late as that. It's half four, I think, because your clocks have changed. Oh, um, we're only... okay. So big difference now. Yeah, yeah. So it's not so bad. Not too bad. Luckily, it's still light. So I've got light to paint with, which is good. <laughs> So I'm just doing the stem here and I've added a little bit of red. So red and green are complementaries, which again, to remind you is that the color opposite each other on a color wheel. So it's violet and yellow and red and green. So it's the same principle. If I add some red to green, it makes it duller and darker, which is what I did here to the yellow. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit more. It almost makes it into a brown. Because I want this to be fairly dark. It's not dark enough. I'm going to go, go stronger. 
All right. I, I am so inspired. I, uh, I, I have a lemon tree that I've been really? growing in a pot and I've been waiting to paint those lemons and now I'm going to paint them on the <gasps> vine, but now I know oh, how to do so cool. it. <laughs> I think we, somebody in the comments said, but I can't find lemons with leaves on them. Once in a while you can find them at the stores, especially the organic ones. Yes. Grow, grow um, your own. Yeah. That's so amazing that you're going to have a go. Oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't show my work, you know, because I completely embarrass myself. Oh, you should. should I'm, jo be. I'm joking. I'm in a couple of galleries. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, with my leaves, because I had to order these. They actually came from Italy, these lemons, would you believe? Um, because um, they, they aren't from the Amalfi Coast. Nice. Um, and they're ones that actually have leaves because you can't buy them very easily in our shops. But they arrive without the leaves on in, in the box, so I have to sellotape them on. <laughs> so you, you actually ordered them from Italy? Um, I ordered, well, they're from London, but they are, they are imported in from Italy on the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. So you had, them shipped, you had them shipped in? I did, especially for this. Wow. We feel honored. <laughs> All right, so back to color mixing. I think you need a bottle of limoncello in the picture. <laughs> that is strong stuff. Whew, I wouldn't <laughs> be able to paint if I had that. Um, so ultramarine, so my dark. I want to make a dark color. So again, I'm starting with a dark blue. Um, ultramarine, cad yellow, and permanent rose. Those are all the three primaries. So all of these, so any combination of ye yellow, red, and blue, if you mix them together in the right proportions, will cancel out and make a almost a black, um, which I think is really good to know. You know, if you want a dark gray or a black, all you have to do is mix the three primaries together. So I'm just going to show you whether that's working or not. And that's a quite a good tester. So it's too blue at the moment. So I haven't got enough of the red or the yellow in. It still looks a little bit blue. All right, so that's coming. Let me do a little test now. So can you see that that is quite a good gray? It's neutral. And the nice thing about that is that you can then push it. So if, because that, um, my bowl here is a little bit kind of reddy color, even though it looks black, there is some red in it. So I could add a little bit more red in there and it would push it over to a red color, which is quite cool. There we go. So um, I'm now going to stick that in. And as I said earlier, I'm going to, I've just dipped in some Gamsol um, to get a kind of, I'd call it kind of a scratchy, scratchy um, mark making. I want to see the brush strokes. Kind of texturized, so you're keeping it thin. Yeah, but not so thin that it kind of runs down the page. I don't well, want that. There's a question in the in the comments. What? It uh -huh. says, what color is the background? Or And I think they missed the early part. Yeah. Um, and that was thinned, uh, just thinned yellow with a little bit of red in it. Correct. Yeah. With um, Gamsol. So just a, a, you know, a spirit to make it thinner. Um, it, it gives a good base. So it's not totally white. Um, and it kind of then peeps through a little bit and gives uh, a feeling of light. And what will, what will your, your ultimate color in the background end up being? Maybe I should do a little bit of that now. Oh, that uh, sounds like a great idea. <laughs> okay. Um, so I've done a, a background on the, I don't know if you can see it that well over there. Um, and it's it's almost, it's um, got a cerulean base. So I'm just going to do that now. How are we doing for time? Are we, oh, we good? here all month. I, I have no problem with it. You're so good. <laughs> Uh, I'd say we'd like to wrap up in 15. Okay. Okay. We've got time. 
Um, so what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of cerulean um, because it's a, I've done that for two reasons I've used cerulean because it's a light color that I want and cerulean is a lighter value than ultramarine. You can see the difference if you squint. And also I want the cerulean because it's got a, a yellow base to it more than this one, which has got the red base. So because that's the color I want. Um, if, I tr if I did it with that, the ultramarine, I could get there, but it would take quite a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot easier with the cerulean. So I'm adding some more lemon yellow. Claire, so somebody in the comments just called you brilliant. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, what a compliment. Thank you. Got a lot of, um, lot of people tuning in from, from the UK and from... Yeah. Also from Australia, so you you're a big draw. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Woohoo! <laughs> say they love your YouTube videos. Oh, great! Wow, very pleasing. Yeah, well, I advertised it on there, telling them about this. So, um, okay, I'm focusing. Right. So, every mix, just about all my mixes have all the primaries in, but just in different proportions. So I started with the cerulean blue. I've added a little bit of the lemon yellow and a little bit of the permanent rose. So again, blue, red, yellow in I that. Think you guys should point out, Claire, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, that um, if you're starting out painting, um, most of the pros just end up using three colors and yeah. and white. And uh, if you're starting out painting, the you know you go to the art store and you want to buy 300 tubes, which I get, I do it all the time. <laughs> but you will have more color harmony if you just stick to three colors, and you know, and if you can do a warm and cool of each color, because of what she just explained, that you can you can put a little of each color into every color. So true. Yeah, it's surprising how many colors you can get with such a limited palette. And um, then once you've learned how to use your colors and how they mix together, um, it's easier then to have more colors. But I would recommend, like you just said, have less to start with. Because when you go into an art shop and you look at all those beautiful colors, you're just like, oh, I want them all. But it makes it harder, I think, in the long run. Yeah, I love your art shops in the UK. <sighs> yeah, kind of the old-fashioned ones. Oh, I love it. Yeah, there's one over by the... Um by the uh, Chelsea Arts Club, which uh -huh. I stay at when I go to UK. And it's just to die for. Nice. You know, yeah. all the, because you know that they were providing colors for some of the great artists in history. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm now going to stick a bit of um, color in there. So I did my tester to see it. Um, and I'm going to, because the light is coming this side, I want to create a feeling of light filled. So um, this side is going to be lighter on, on my background and this side's going to be darker. Okay. So you want the lightest background to be on the lightest side. Yes. Um, yeah. With to a degree, because it's also quite useful to have a dark against a light here. But in general, it's going to be lighter, you know, simplifying, because we want it simple. We want this achievable, don't we? Okay, so it's kind of giving you an idea. Obviously, this is very rough, um, but I want to just show you how it's looking. And so I've built up. I started with the lemons, and I've built outwards. Um, so, I, you know, and it is kind of now building so it, I can tell whether it's working or not tonally and um, color wise. And as I go, I vary the color and the tonal value a little bit. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to mention to everybody while uh, while you're watching. Uh, the plein air convention is coming up in May and it's going to be spectacular. Uh, and we have, I think she's a Brit, uh, Jane Seymour, the actress, also painter is going to be joining us to celebrate our 10 year anniversary. And uh, we still have a few seats left. So we'd love for you to join us. Uh, if you want, if you don't want, no, 
You won't be offended. <laughs> you know, that really helps just getting that background in. It does. It makes it because a lot of people are kind of scared of backgrounds on a still life. Um, but I think it's part of it and not to be scared because actually um, once it's in, it makes it look so much better. And it, you don't have to labor over it. You can see how I've kind of whacked it in there. And it's, you know, it already kind of makes it look like more of a painting. Now, Claire was on Plein Air Live last week, which is our online virtual conference we do once a year. We do four of them, but that one's about Plein Air. And, and Claire is a Plein Air painter, goes out a lot painting. And um, so what? why should somebody consider Plein Air painting, Claire? Ooh, um, I think everybody's different for what they like out there. But for me, I think it's about being, about connecting with what you're, painting so it's not just about um looking at it from a photograph it's actually feeling that the wind um experiencing um the whole caboodle you know it's it's a whole senses thing and getting the energy of the place and um i find it exciting because it's quite often at the seat of your pants whether it's going to work or not um and i like that I like the challenge. It's it's painting is not easy and and plein air painting is super not easy. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, does that uh, answer your question enough? Yeah, you have. I you know, I, okay. I I I find I find that studio painters who end up going outdoors painting outdoors that's I guess that's a, I said that twice, didn't I? Anyway, they <laughs> they um they become better painters because they now can see the life in what they're painting because photographs lie. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think when I, cause I was a studio painter up until 2016 and um, it surprised me how rubbish I was when I went outside. Um, I, I felt like I had to learn again and it was really quite humbling um, and I still remember that. So, but you know, when you a better I painter, you, because you, you persisted. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and I'm a lot I'm more doing a week from today, Claire, what are you doing? I'm going to do my first global paint out online. Oh. So I have a bunch of artists, um, coming over to my studio at, uh, we're going to start at 5 PM Eastern a week from today. And, uh, we're going to, I have a, I, I don't know how many are coming. I, I'd say at least four or five, but wow. we're going to set up and paint together and let everybody uh, see the view and paint the view. And uh, just, just, we're going to talk and just, you know, no, no, no particular agenda. Just thought it'd be fun because spring is here and a lot of people don't have spring yet. It's a chance for them to sit in their, in their house and paint with us and, and uh, be part of the family. I think that sounds amazing. Um, I bet you're going to have such fun. Yeah, we'll have, I'll bet we'll have three, 5,000 people on there. Woo! Yeah. Wow. It's going to be fun. We're going to see if we can break, break a world's record. I don't oh. know if there is a world's record yet for, for uh, online plein air painting, but we're going to see if we can come up with one. Huh. Well, well, I think that's such a good thing to do. Well done, you. I'll definitely be watching. <laughs> Well, you need to be painting. True. Yes, I have to be part of that. How do I do right. that? <laughs> yeah. And, and then this is my evil way of getting uh, 5,000 paintings of my backyard done. <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll, we'll have more paintings of that backyard than Monet's garden, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have lots to choose from. <laughs> well, I, I probably don't get them. I just, I just get, it'll be fun to see. It will. Yeah. So I am just working on the shadow areas and um, putting the reflected light. So underneath the lemon, there is reflected shadow, reflected color into the shadow, and then also reflected light down under here, um, which uh, is quite fun to get. How do you know get. whether the shadow should be warm or cool? Oof. I think that is a tricky question. <laughs> and um, I don't think there's a set answer to that. 
Um, I generally just observe and don't assume whether it's cool or warm. I look. Um, today, I'm squinting my eyes and it's pretty neutral. Um, I can see that there's some yellow going down there. Um, and then also reflected color from this into that as well. Um, so that does make a difference too, which I need to put in. So I didn't really answer your question, but I don't think there is a right or wrong in that. And there's also usually a little kind of ring of darker as well around this, you know, next to it. Well, I struggle with that. You know, they say uh, warm light, cool shadow, cool light, warm shadow. Sure. But, I, you know, sometimes yeah. I'm outside, I can't tell. I really no. can't. So I just, sometimes I just fake it. Well, I think that's fine. Um, and I, I think I'd agree that I do too, because I don't think you can always tell. And if you can't tell, then it doesn't matter. Do one or other or both. Yeah. <laughs> well, the goal is to make a good painting. It is. Um, and so um, I think I'm going to go back to the lemons uh, just to give it a little bit more oomph. So there are questions in the chat. Uh, there sure. will be a registration link sent out. It's free. There's no charge. Uh, uh, I think there probably will be a limit on how many people we can do live, but I think that's like 5,000. Um, <laughs> but maybe, maybe wow. not. I mean, we had, we had, we did something the other day that I think had maybe a little bit more than that on it. But anyway, um, if you're not getting uh, stuff from paint tube and from streamline, uh, if you're not subscribing to our newsletters, uh, then you're probably not on the mail list, but that's a good way to get on the mail list is go to huh. like plein air uh, today and sign up for the uh, newsletter. And then you'll get notification of stuff like this and all the new videos and the new events and the artist retreats and the plein air convention and new books and new video, everything. So. Sounds good. It's I'm exhausting. Do that. It's exhausting just talking about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I think I think it's going to be amazing. So what day is that happening? That's happening a week from today at 5 p.m. It's going to go for at least two hours. We wanted afternoon light. And okay. uh, so I've got a couple of very famous artists coming over to join me. Yeah. How uh, cool. That, that happen I can't tell. Uh, oh. That happened to be in town. And uh but one of them is a very, uh, how could I say it properly? Been around a long, long time. Been an artist for most of his life, 60 plus, oh, 70 cool. years or something. And then huh. the other is this very, very hot artist who uh, everybody knows. And actually another one who everybody knows. So there's at least three that everybody knows. And then there's probably you know, half dozen or so others. Sounds good. It sounds like you've got a good um, following for it to make it happen. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> cool. Um, so luscious lemons. Um, I've done a mid tonal value here to kind of join the two up. So it's not quite so in, you know, in half now. I'm looking at the shapes um and what's you know where there is variety um there's a little bit of reflected light in there so i'm going to put that in a little bit on the bibbly bit at the back um and it's always quite fun to put the bibble in on there put the what in the bibble what's a bibble <laughs> technical term for the bit bit at the end of the um the lemon you know you get a little bibble oh the little nib yeah there we go All right. it just it so makes it look like, like the end we, because we're going to wrap it up in the next five yeah uh, or maybe less um yeah. what else would you be doing on this to finish it because you're not going to get through it all no, and I'm actually going to show you one I prepared earlier. Oh, yeah. So that's how I'd hope it to come out. So um, you, you can it see. It looks like you've added some highlights on that painting. 
Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Can um, you, is it time you could show us how to do highlights real quick? Of course. Yes. Let me do that now. All right. She is so easy going, man. This is great. <laughs> Um, so I've just done a big glob fill of um, titanium white. Um, you can see that I've varied my tonal values from light to dark. So it kind of helps me be organized on my palette. And I'm also going to put down a little bit of the lemon yellow because it's, it's again, a, light, um, a lighter than the CAD because I want it to be quite light and also quite thick. Can you, you see can how do thick that with is? that big thick brush, those little highlights. Yes, yes. Oh, because I'm, gonna I'm not be going <laughs> to. Oh God, I'm going to get the jippies now. Um, so I'm not going to try and um, make it look exact because this is not an exact painting; it's an impression. Um, so I'm squinting my eyes and looking for the lightest areas where the light is hitting it, um, and it's kind of a almost like a little um, dimples. So a little bit down there as well. And then a bit here. So it doesn't have to be um, exactly looking like what it looks like on a lemon, which is kind of pitted. Yeah. But it still gives an idea that the light is coming over there and there's a bit there too. So it, on the lemon on the right, uh, there's there's a little bit of reflected light in the bottom of the lemon. Uh, if I'm looking at it from your still life, how do you put reflected light in? Okay, so it's almost similar to um, the highlight that I've just done. I might just warm it up a bit um, and add a bit of um, maybe the this color. What I try to do now that I've got all these mixes is I try and use the mixes in my mixes. So then I know that it's going to be harmonized. So a little bit of warm. So can you see that it's um yeah. It's lighter. It's kind of standing out. I'm going to use a bit more light just to accentuate it. So that that looks quite pretty. It does. Um, <laughs> I'm also spotting a bit of light in there too. So this area here is, you know, is quite important. And I'm going to just whack it in if I've got time. So I'm I'm going to use the um, the color I've just used, but add a little bit of the um, violety color just to cool it down again, just to neutralize it. Because this, these shapes can help me um, shape the actual, um, what's it called? So this is the whew, negative shape, that's it. That's a negative shape. And it helps me with these positive shapes because I'm painting around them. Quit being so negative. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I can vary vary it a bit more with light and okay we want everybody watching to do a lemon still life in the next 48 hours <laughs> that would be again. Bad. And, and i want you to do the exact same palette I want you to do it I, because if you don't do what you've learned you won't learn this is true this yeah is your homework assignment go into the comments and commit right now i want to see your commit. <laughs> there we go so that now that I've filled up some of the white, it kind of gives more of an idea. And again, I'm, I'm going to do the lights a bit more over this side because it's feeling of the light coming down. Maybe a bit more under there just to accentuate that lemon. All right. We're getting some people who are committing, but not very many. I, you guys are wimps. You need to commit. <laughs> You're not going to learn if you don't do it. All so right. the last thing I'm going to do is just do the highlight on the pot. All right. Um, I'm using kind of a stubby brush. Uh, it's a synthetic one. Um, make sure that it's light enough. And I'm holding it quite lightly and just bring it round. Makes it come alive. It does. There we are. 
and then add maybe just a little bit more light in there. There. Outstanding. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, it's similar to this one. Um, obviously, I haven't had quite you know the time, but then also it helps you to see that. All right. So they have to commit. They either have to commit to doing a still life in, in value study or they have to commit to doing a still life in lemons. Looks like a lot of people are jumping on board now. It's about time, yeah. you guys. All right, Claire, <laughs> well, we're going to have to pull news. the plug. We're going to have to get okay. the, the hook because we're going to, uh, some of the platforms will shut us off if we hit an hour. So okay, come back on camera so they can see you because there's yeah. a lot of people on that weren't here when you first came. Well, thanks so much for watching. Oh, you're very welcome. We like your studio space. Can we see some of your paintings real quick? You're going to have to run over there. Oh, fast, fast, sure. fast. Okay. I'll give you your a quick tour. husband is called Mr. Bean. M Ooh. Mr. B is my husband. Mr. B. Okay. Nice. So this is where we live. These, All these are my paintings. Claire, if I come over, will you take me around to all your favorite spots? We'll go painting. Oh, I'd love oh, to. You You'd could be do very welcome. Right here. Look at that. <laughs> You're living the dream, baby. <laughs> we are. We are. Um, I'm just going to hand you back to Mr. B. Um, so right. thank you so much, Eric. Thank it's been you. amazing. <laughs> All right. You were amazing. One of the most popular ever. The comments are going nuts. They love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank Take you. Care. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Our guest today, Claire Bowen in England. And wow, she is so fantastic. Give her a thumbs up, applause. Make sure that you forward her stuff. Uh, you guys, I'd love for you to come to the Plain Air Convention. Uh, we've already sold out one hotel. We've got two more hotels to fill up, and it's going to happen. So you might as well get them while you can. And Jeff, I saw that your boss is making you work during Plain Air Convention. Tell him that you're going to quit unless you can go. All right? Just saying. All right, you guys, have a great day. Thanks for being back. I'm, I, I love doing this every day with you. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys uh, have not... If you're watching the replays later, you're not on live, make sure to put a comment in because we're going to be giving away a pair of value specs. Okay.